Okay. So, we have steam on the adiabatic turbine. We have two properties for the initial state. So that's completely defined for us. We have a mass flow rate as well. And then we have that it leaves the turbine at 30 kilopascal. So we have the pressure for the leaving um, steam. Isentropic efficiency is 90%. And then neglecting the kinetic energy of the steam, determine the temperature of the exit and the power output of the turbine. Okay, note that it's power that's being asked. So we're looking for kilowatts, not looking for kilojoules, but kilojoules per second, right, rate. Okay, what's the first thing we're gonna do in this problem? The first thing is to actually note that there's a steam here, we're going from a higher state of energy. So my first state of energy is high, higher than the second, right? We're going from eight megapascals to 30. So we're doing this, right? That's the idea of a turbine. It's gonna generate work for us. And this is gonna have an output, right? Because we're decreasing this be an output because we can't destroy this energy. So it's gonna be work in heat, but there's no heat because it's adiabatic. So all the change in energy is equal to the work. So we can relate everything with enthalpy. That's the first thing we need to do, right? As we go on, I'm gonna skip these steps because you guys already know how to do this. Be sure that to do this, right? The second thing is we're gonna look at these set of properties, look on the table, on the mixture table, and we'll see that this is a superheated fluid, right? Because our temperature is greater than the saturated temperature or our pressure is smaller than our saturated pressure. And then because it's a superheater, I can go to table A6 and grab the properties for my first state at the superheated table. So I already grabbed the isentropic uh, sorry, the entropy and the enthalpy, okay? Since this is a turbine and the efficiency is 90%, 0.9, we know that this efficiency is related to the difference in H1 minus H2 actual divided by the work that could be done if we had an isentropic process with no irreversibility. That's not supposed to be A, it's supposed to be S. Two S. Okay, so we have H1 that was quite easy, quite easy to get. Now we don't have this guy yet, but we can determine it, right? Because we can determine this imaginary state in which the pressure is still going to be 30 kilopascals, but the other thing we're going to grab is the entropy. And the entropy has to be the same as the first one. That will be our imaginary state 2S. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find our state 2S, isentropic state. And there's only two things we need to define a state, and the two things are right in front of us, right? The pressure of this guy here, if it's this 2S state, is 30 kilopascals, that's a given. And the entropy of this guy here, entropy of the 2S state has to be equal to the entropy of the first state, which we have from the table to be 6. 0.7266. <clears throat> so we have two things. As long as we have two things, we have the defined state, right? So we can go back to our property table and we can look at 30, 30 kilopascals, just making sure in the saturated water pressure table, so all good. 30, I'm going to be looking at the last column, which we have the relationship between the entropies. And check it out. Highlight this. And our entropy is 6.7. So it falls between these two extremes, right? So it's not going to be superheated. It's not going to be it's compressed. It's not saturated liquid. It's not saturated vapor. It's between. It's a mixture of the two. So we can conclude that our isentropic imaginary state is a mixture. Okay, so as per usual, because it falls in between, so let's do that quickly. You're already sick and tired of doing this. Because it falls in between these two things, therefore it's a mixture, saturated mixture. And then if it's a saturated mixture, well, that means that our entropy, right? That means that our enthalpy, sorry, not entropy, enthalpy is going to always to be a combination of two things. It's also going to be a mixture, a mixture of the vapor times the X plus the liquid times one minus x, or 100% minus x, right? So let's find x, we need to find the quality 
Let's go ahead and find the quality. How do we find the quality of any mix? Well, it's easy. You just have to grab one property, whichever property we want, specific volume, state property, specific volume, internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, and then relate to the extremes. It's the same thing as the lever rule or the lever rule that some of you guys learned on 205, right? In this case, the thing that we have minus, oops, S liquid, grab from the table, and over the whole possible stream, which is vapor minus liquid, right? It's also an interpolation. So we have everything we need, right? Because we have the S is kind of obvious. It's the 6.7266. The liquid, we can grab off the same table we were just looking at. And I have here 0 0.9. 441 and then this guy here you you guys are welcome to grab the two and subtract or you can do you can be savvy already on the the knowledge to be savvy so you know that this guy right here the middle one you know this guy here is just the difference between this guy and this guy right so you can just grab this straight off instead of grabbing the two of them and subtracting so that's what you can do 6.8 234, which gives us a quality of 84.75%. Brilliant. Now that we have that quality, we can go ahead and use this quality in here. We can grab the enthalpy of the saturated vapor from the table, the enthalpy from the saturated liquid from the table, and the quality is going to be 84.75. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys the the value. So this one here, the vet paper one is 2624.6. The liquid one from the table again is 289.27. And we do that math and we end up with H2S equals, again, check it out, right? 85% vapor. So it has to be way closer to 2624 than to 289. And indeed, what I got was 22 point, no, 2268, 2268.5. Now make sure you're backing me up on these maps so that I don't get anything wrong. All right, so now we have, what do we have? From this, back to this equation here, back, back to the um, efficiency relationship. We have our enthalpy for the first state, and we have our enthalpy for this imaginary state, this um, isentropic transformation state. So now the only thing that we don't have is this guy here. Okay, now there's two ways you can solve this. You can go about solving this. Well, to find the, the temperature, we're going to have to do this guy regardless, find this guy regardless. But to find the power output, the work that is, right, we can simply grab this difference here, and multiply by this because we know that this i'm actually do this a different way we know that this 90 percent what is that 90 percent telling us well that's just a relationship between how much we actually got out of it the actual work and how much was available as if we didn't have any losses to do nice and right so we have this difference here we have we have this have h1 we have this guy too so we can subtract them and multiply by 0.9 and that's going to be our actual energy um, output from this turbine. Then we just multiply that by the three and we should get the same result. So we're gonna do that both ways just to make sure that we're doing the right thing. But let's keep going and find the um, H2S that we're after, right? So this difference here, that's gonna be, let's do it. This, this is gonna be, I'm gonna rewrite this over here. I wanna make it messy. I'm gonna make it messier. So 0.9 equals 3399.5 minus what we're looking for divided by 3399.5 minus 2268.5. Okay, so therefore H2A equals. 
Kilo juice, kilo grams. Cool. So what's the next step? Okay, now that we found this, what, what are we looking for? If you guys recall, we're looking for the temperature, right? What is the out, outlet temperature, the exit temperature? Okay, but until now we didn't have we, we didn't have this state defined, this actual state here. This actual state was not defined yet. Because we only had one property. But now we have two. And as soon as we have two, we're good to go, right? So let's write it down as uh, limited in space here. Let's write down an actual uh, actual state two. Let me just write down where my limit is so that I'm not crossing the limits. Okay. So actual state two. What are the two properties that we have for state two? Well, we know the pressure. 30 kilopascals, we knew it, knew it all along. But we, now we also know the enthalpy of second state, right? We know the uh, enthalpy has to be 23, 81.6 kilojoules per kilogram. So now that we have that, that information, we can go back here and have a look, and have a look at our enthalpy, and our enthalpy is on this guy here. And we can look at 30 kilopascals. And we can go wait here. And then we do the same analysis, right? If we had everything uh, vapor, it will be this guy or higher, right? 26 or higher. If it were liquid or compressed, it would be this guy or lower. But what we do have is 2300. And 2300 falls between these two extremes here. Therefore, we have a saturated mixture. Okay, so again, same analysis that we always do. Same explanation is here, right? Because my liquid and my vapor are, because my H falls between my two extremes, this is a mixture. It's, it's, it's a set mix saturated mixture. And if this guy is a saturated mixture, it can only be at one temperature, one temperature only, right? Learned that several times already. If this is the case, if it's between these two limits, it has to be a saturated temperature, right? So that's 69.09 without further math required. So T exit or T2, if you want T2A, to let's put it, there's no T2S, but T2A is, 69.09 Celsius. Okay, and what is the work? That's the last bit of the puzzle, right? What is the work? Well, we know the work when we hold from here to here is just the difference between the enthalpies. Now that we have the actual enthalpy, that's quite trivial, right? Because the workout work out will be um, what is my first one? 3399.5 minus. 23, 81.6, okay, and that, that's in what? That's in kilojoules per Kelvin, right? Kilojoules per Kelvin. So if I want my power, and you guys remember that we wanted power, what we need to do is get that work out and multiply by our mass flow rate, which we conveniently have from the beginning, right? The three guy. We already always had that from the start. So I just have to get this difference and multiply by three and my power output is 30, 53.7 kilojoules per second or kilowatts, right? Because we're getting kilojoules per, kilo, uh, per kilogram and multiplying by kilogram per second. So kilogram goes away, we're left with the seconds. So it's about 3,000 kilowatts. Now, before we top that off, before we top it off, let's just make sure of what the thing that I told you guys before, because I said, well, you didn't have to use that. You didn't have to use this value here because we knew that relationship there. We knew that 0 0.9 has to be equal to the actual output, actual workout, divided by my isentropic, which is uh, three. 
minus the 22, 68.5. So let's have a look really quick just to make sure that this checks out. Okay, so let's grab that difference there. This difference here, so 3399.5 and 2268.5. Okay, and this we multiply by 0.9 to get what's our actual output. Okay, so our actual output point is 1,017.9 kilojoules per kilogram. Multiply that by 3 kilograms per second, and there you go. Exactly the same value, right? So another way to do it, just double-checking we did the right thing. We did. It's about 3,000 kilowatts that this guy can actually output. And again, what would be our maximum output? Well, our maximum output would be uh, this guy divided by 0.9, so it will be 340. 3,400, sorry, about 3,400 3, kilowatts. But instead of that, we're only getting about 3,000 out of it because we have these irreversibilities in the process.